We've finally found them. Let's go get their planet. A creature stares at the data flashing on a super high-tech translucent screen. Their space station is many light years away from Earth. They were waiting for this signal for a long, long time. They jumped into spaceships and rushed toward Earth. And they don't come as tourists or friends. They are out to conquer. No worries, it's just a hypothetical scenario. But humanity did send a message into space back in 1974. They aimed it at a star cluster 25,000 light years away. If the message ever reaches someone, they'll know who we are, what we're made of, and creepiest of all, exactly where we live. So why would someone send out such info? Back in the 1970s, the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico had just gone through a major upgrade. The scientists really wanted to show off the power of this massive radio telescope, and they found a way. Instead of just listening out for possible signals from other civilizations, they flipped the script and sent one. The mastermind behind it was Frank Drake, a legendary astronomer known for the Drake Equation. It's a formula to estimate how many intelligent civilizations might exist in the galaxy. He teamed up with Carl Sagan, and they created a message in binary code, just ones and zeros, that described humanity. The whole thing was squeezed into just 1,679 bits. Why that number? Because it's the product of two prime numbers, 73 and 23. If you arrange the bits into a rectangle of 73 rows and 23 columns, you get a pixelated picture, kind of like early 8-bit video games. So what exactly did we send? First of all, the numbers 1 to 10. Second, the atomic numbers for hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, the building blocks of DNA. There was also a rough diagram of our DNA structure, a stick figure of a human. Yep, a stick man, I'm not kidding. Then there was also our average height and the human population at the time, about 4.3 billion. Oh, and they did include the location of our planet in a diagram of our solar system, and also a drawing of the Arecibo telescope itself. They aimed the message at Messier 13. It's a huge ancient cluster with hundreds of thousands to millions of stars in one place. Imagine how many prospective planets could be there. The cluster is about 25,000 light years away. That means it will take 25,000 years for the message to get there and another 25,000 years for any reply to reach us. So realistically, we won't be getting a new phone who dis text from extraterrestrial creatures anytime soon. The whole thing was meant more as a symbolic gesture, as a way to flex human intelligence and celebrate our tech. Even Carl Sagan says it was kind of like launching a bottle into the cosmic ocean. Sounds cool. But not everyone agrees it was a good idea. Over the years, the Arecibo message has sparked a lot of controversy. Because, here's the thing, what if someone does hear us? And what if they're not friendly? One of the most brilliant physicists in history, Stephen Hawking, famously warned against actively trying to contact extraterrestrial civilizations. He explained that when advanced civilizations have met less advanced ones on Earth, it usually ended badly. And by badly here, I mean horrible things like colonization and many people losing their lives. Hawking said trying to contact some creatures without knowing who's out there could lead to someone coming to raid Earth for resources, then move on. And the famous physicist is not alone here. Plenty of modern scientists argue that sending signals into deep space is reckless. We don't know who's out there. We don't know what they want. And now, they know exactly where to find us. The scariest part is that even if we regret sending the message, it's already gone and we can't take it back. It's flying through space right now at the speed of light. Like a cosmic postcard we can't unsend. Since Arecibo, we haven't stopped but gotten even bolder. In 2008, scientists sent a Beatles song across the universe toward the North Star, which is 433 light years away from Earth. The song is traveling at the speed of light and should reach its goal in the year 2441. 
the scientists digitized the song into a data stream, so endless ones and zeros, and blasted it as a radio signal using the DSS-63 dish in Madrid. That dish is about three-fourths as tall as the Statue of Liberty, and it wasn't the first time music traveled into space. Former Beatle Paul McCartney beamed his first intergalactic concert to the International Space Station in 2005 and loved the idea of the new launch. In 2013, some extraterrestrial enthusiasts started a whole crowd-funded loan signal project. The project's beacon was sending tiny 144-character messages, kind of like cosmic tweets, from everyday people on Earth to a red dwarf star named Gliese 526. It's 17.6 light-years away from Earth, and it doesn't have any known planets. The message could reach it in 18 years. There was one part made up of a sequence of prime numbers to explain physics and where we are in the galaxy. It had enough clues so that whoever's listening could crack the next part, the human language messages. The second layer was the fun part, the 144-character citizen messages sent from the Lone Signal website. They could be in any language and say pretty much anything. Anyone joining the beaming community could send their first message free, but after that, each new one cost 25 cents. They were hoping to raise $100 million to build a global network of satellite dishes, so we could beam messages all across the Milky Way. But oops, the project ran out of cash just after a couple of months. With our current tech, we could send anything into space, from entire encyclopedias, 3D models, to digital DNA into the stars. But the big question is, who will hear it? And what if they want to wipe us out without even leaving their planet? The wildest part is that some people think some mysterious they have already found us. On the night of August 15, 1977, scientists at Ohio State University's Big Ear Observatory spotted a mysterious deep space signal. It was exactly in the spot where guys from the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Organization had been hoping to find something. The signal lasted 72 seconds, was super strong, and then completely vanished. For years, many people believed it was a signal from some unknown extraterrestrial civilization and were hoping to hear from them again. But then, in 2020, scientists spotted many wow signals tiny, much weaker versions of the famous 1977 one. Back in the 70s, scientists didn't know about magnetars, those super-powerful neutron stars with insane magnetic fields. The original WOW researchers guessed maybe a hydrogen cloud was behind it, but they couldn't explain how it got so loud. Those massive clouds of hydrogen float through space and constantly give off radio signals. Astronomers have been using them for decades to map the shape of our Milky Way. But they're never usually powerful enough to match the WOW signal unless something, like a magnetar, gives them a little boost. It sounds like a really legit explanation for that mysterious signal, but we can't be 100% sure it was that. And just the same way, we can't be 100% sure if the Arecibo message was a brilliant step forward or a potentially dangerous mistake. We won't know for thousands of years, if ever. The Arecibo telescope collapsed in 2020. After nearly 60 years of exploring space, the giant dish fell apart and was eventually demolished. But the message lives on. It's still flying through space across star systems we've never seen. Maybe one day, someone will hear it, and maybe they'll reply with something we've been dreaming about for centuries. You're not alone. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.